Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India friends welcome back to online course structure form and architecture the synergy today uh, we will talk about lecture number 5 that is synthesis of architectural and structural form so before i start today's lecture uh, so far whatever we have covered we have seen that structural form uh, they helped to make architecture to fulfill the concept and also bring some architectural visual qualities and also we discussed different kind of loads in uh, our previous lectures where we have seen um, like starting from the date load, live load, uh, then different lateral loads, seismic load, etc. So, in this lecture we will uh, basically focus on different structural form and how they are making uh, a you know strong correlation with architectural form creation. So, we will pick up some of the major and predominant structural form that being used to create some uh, world class architecture and uh, in the modern world. So, gradually we will also see uh, like take some examples from the history where other kind of structural form being created to bring the architecture. So, let us start today's lecture. Here we again uh, like previous lectures we just uh, look into the definition. So, what is the form already we have uh, discussed it the form is basically uh, the visible uh, object okay? and we define it with a shape. So, it is a definition given by uh, Francis D. K. Ching. So, what exactly it is let us have a look into this form is generally and primarily understood a shape or three dimensional massing. Okay. So, one object having three dimension that will give a sensation to our eyes and we see that object as a form, but also encompasses additional architectural aspect. So, it is not like a very dull three dimensional shape, but in order to make it and give a you know term called architectural form. So, it also have different aspect like space creation, then different arrangements including structural configuration. And this is obvious after uh, you know initial few lectures. Now, we all agree that in order to give the form of architecture structure is indispensable means it is very much needed without structural stability, structural support we cannot create the form the way we want which may organize and unify architectural design. So, basically form by this definition if we simplify this. So, it is three dimensional object along with that it will have some architectural aspect, it should have some space to live in, in order to you know maximize uh, your utility and also this should be supported with some structural configuration and finally, all together it will basically create and unify an architectural design. So, with that we move forward to the architectural form. So, here it says architectural form is an inclusive term that refers preliminary to a building external outline. Here this is very important external outline or shape. So, whatever the form we normally say, so basically most uh, commonly we refer to the outline of the building. If a building is something like that, so we say it is a domical form of architecture. What is inside the space uh, essentially we do not say about that and to a lesser degree reference to its internal organization as already I mentioned. Uh, like in order to create architecture, we have to articulate spaces. So, it will have a relationship between different space, their transitional space, how we connect to space. So, 
that is very important for creating good architecture. So, that our purpose to create will be achieved, but when we discussed about the form, so basically it is whatever the overall shape being created and basically the outline. But sometimes also we also observe uh, the internal form, sometimes uh, we I have given one example of Pantheon where uh, it is looking very beautiful from the inside that uh, your domical form that we have seen. So, one thing is very clear, it is giving a shape or outline. Now, in this shape is basically creating a visual representation and that also having some property of the size, color, texture, position, orientation and visual inertia. So, these all are very important thing like whether my structure will be in human scale or in monumental scale. So, in uh, I guess that in uh, like who have studied the history of architecture. So, earlier we uh, have seen that um, like uh, many examples which the architecture is in uh, monumental scale, the huge structure. So, size is something uh, very huge and sometimes it is nowadays with the age of you know, uh, you know shortage of space and all sometimes we actually optimize the space. So, with the minimalistic form and small size. Now, to the color definitely it will give a contrast uh, to the background. So, whenever we see any image or who are like having uh, um, like some interest in photography they also capture a frame. So, in the frame we have a background and one foreground and with different color contrast created. So, sometimes the architectural form is very simple rectilinear, but the color used through the material or maybe paint can create something different. Texture obviously we have discussed that sometimes it may be rough, sometimes it may be very smooth like glass. So, this is important the position of that. Now, based on the position how you place your form one after another, how you make composition that will um, actually give you a different sense. Orientation uh, it is again very important uh, not only for the aesthetic purpose, but also sometimes in order to tackle with the lateral load. If you can recall uh, the wind load that uh, we have seen that when we place a rec, uh, you know this rectilinear form and this is the prevailing wind direction. So, this create thrust. In order to that if I just uh, rotate a bit, so we can minimize it in that and visual inertia is very important that will give a visual sense of stability. We have seen some of the buildings uh, in uh, our previous lectures that where we have seen that the building is following uh, the stability, visual stability is there and sometimes it is not. So, it uh, refers to the instability, visual instability to that. So, these are the properties of uh, a form that will make one architecture from other. Now, come to the structural form. So, form is shape. Now, how to really distinguish between architectural form and structural form that is a question. So, here structural form is the primary or most visually dominant structural system of a building. Okay. This statement is not really giving a very comprehensive answer to us. So, what exactly it want to mean? So, so far we discussed that the shape is a three dimensional thing, then in order to make it architectural form. So, it should have some uh, you know some space and other thing to call it architecture and then um, basically architecture is the outline of that architectural design. This shape, this outline is your architectural form, whether it is in rectilinear form or in any sub uh, curvature or something. Now, structure is basically the backbone of that, the dominant structural system. Now, here we should be careful. So, when we say the dominant structure, what exactly? Like 
by looking at the building you will just get to know that okay this structural system is of this kind but sometimes even uh, rather most of the cases a building may have more than one structural system one to just give the uh, structural stability other may to give some you know other faci uh, facilities so which system is visually dominant that is a question so which form will take a building may have a uh, arch form some part of the building and somewhere it is just a uh, you know beam column structure so there uh, which form should we take so concept of structural form is unhelpfully simplistic so basically when you say structural form it's rather to say this is the structural system so when we say structural systems then we have some category into that so we can classify our structural system in many ways so one way of classifying it with uh, the overall shape of three dimensional shape and other thing but structural system can also be defined with other parameters like its nature whether it is uh, like your compressive structure or it is your tensile structure or so on or else we can also define it in other terms like your supporting structure or supported structure but in this particular lecture we will not discuss those we will come to that in uh, some uh, you know future lectures but in this uh, primarily we will focus on the structural form based system so i will just make it clear uh, with uh, certain example say for example if you see a building uh, making of such you know uh, concrete or steel member and the form being created is simplifying uh, or simply say it is an arch so this is basically the form but again this system whether it is uh, like your tensile or it is compressive or something we will uh, touch upon those issues and we will discuss one by one uh, in uh, our future lectures. So, let us move on to uh, the concept uh, again this is a uh, very important and very interesting um, slide. So, here the structure can be defined with 4 S strength, steepness, stability and synergy. So, what is strength? So, basically strength is some property by which you can prevent breaking. Okay? So, if I having a beam uh, which is having good strength may be made of good quality concrete. So, it will resist more load. So, it will stop from breaking, but at the same time say for example, I take these uh, pen examples. So, it is made of some material having some kind of strength, but not as compared to concrete. So, if I put pressure on that it may break with pain it may take some time, but if you do it with a chalk maybe as because of is uh, you know brittle property it will break even uh, you know earlier than this one. So, strength is very important. Uh, like uh, property of a structure. So, depending on the load also we have to uh, you know be choosy about selecting material having the proper strength which will help to prevent from the breaking. You can see this uh, you know schematic where this is a beam and uh, supported by two columns and when a load is applied showing by this arrow. So, it is breaking. So, uh, if you make it strong then it will, but uh, regarding this I just want to highlight another important issue we will also come to that later on, but uh, as because now we are discussing this say for example, when we uh, make a slab uh, resting on a column. So, basically uh, if you know this is particular section, now in this case 
I just zoom it. So, suppose this is made of concrete and made of PCC. PCC stand for plain cement concrete. So, there is no reinforcement. Now, because of the self weight and also some live load, load of furnitures and then people. So, it will have some bending. Okay. And what is happening here? So, if you want to see this one, this section. So, the upper portion will have one type of uh, load that is like they will have the compression. Okay. So, this particular portion will try to you know uh, contracting to each other and this portion will try to expand. So, tension will be developed here. Now, for that reason uh, it will collapse from the bottom in this case because load is applied from the top if I apply load from the bottom. So, it will first develop crack the upper section and uh, let me tell you one thing the com, uh, like concrete like plain cement concrete. So, basically the property of concrete it is having good compressive strength. So, in compression it will sustain, but not in tension, but tension developed at the bottom. So, in order to overcome we have to support it, we have to reinforce it with some material having higher tensile strength value and that is why we put reinforcement. And uh, the reason for this kind of slab, we put the reinforcement in the lower side of the section, okay, so that this will take care of the tension. So, it will give a balance with tension, compression and finally, uh, we will have some equilibrium. So, we will come to that uh, and we will discuss with some experiment also, but anyway. So, to make it uh, sometime uh, stronger having good strength, we may uh, look for some combination of different structural material. Now, come to steepness. Steepness is a property which will prevent uh, the excessive deformation. Say for example, uh, if it will not have this much of steepness, so it will deform and the time uh, like if you create some structure having higher deformation, which will not be really uh, a good sign, because then your whole structure the you know supporting uh, structure or the supported structure on this column may act in a different manner. So, this is another property which uh, is very important to select about the structure. Now, come to stability. Stability will depend on the arrangement of your structural element. We have given one example like your pyramid and inverted pyramid. Okay. So, depending on the arrangement because of the lateral load and other thing. So, stability is basically uh, you know prevent the collapse. So, if arrangement is something like that we make a composition uh, something like this. is one option number one and I just make option number two here ok. So, when we arrange this uh, you know cuboid one after another. So, this is option number one this is option number two. Now, my question to you uh, looking at these two uh, and consider the same material and all which structure is considered to be more stable. So, I am sure that all of you agree that one is much more stable than two because of the mass and other thing and that is why those points uh, where it get connected is very crucial. Now, we have discussed the um, you know activity during earthquake. So, there will be some lateral movement in both the direction horizontal direction left right and uh, you know upward downward. So, in that case basically those joints are very critical, because here you just represent it in the real case. So, this is slab and this is uh, a beam or 
there will be some column and also those joints should be casted adequately, proper uh, care should be taken, so that during that movement the structure will act as a monolithic structure. What is monolithic structure? Made of say you know similar one cut uh, you know uh, you know single material, sometimes you know the cave uh, we consider the rock cut cave and all they are monolithic structure. So, that all will have uh, the motion, so that this building will be stable. But though we have good strength material, having the steepness, the property and also the arrangement and assure the stability. But then also there is something which is very important to bring the result as per our requirement that is the synergy and that the all subject the whole course is all about the synergy between different structural element. So, if you want something to be very strong, stiff and also stable, so you must have a good synergy between those materials along with the design elements. So, that we cannot compromise our requirement at the same time we should not compromise the structural safety. So, that my structure will be visually pleasant, structurally strong and having a good durability it will stay for longer. So, this is something uh, uh, is very important and looking into this uh, concept sometimes you know uh, we have to reject some of the structural form which may not be applicable for our design. So, in upcoming slides what we will see basically the synthesis between architectural form and structural form. So, looking at that basically it will give a sense of a shape through dimensional shape, but at the same time it is being so well designed it is giving the architecture the way we want and also the structural uh, form that support that to bring it into reality. So, let us uh, move forward. So, here we have listed uh, 8 such uh, you know structural and architectural form synthesis and we will see by uh, with some examples some photographs from you know different uh, parts of the world and specially the modern architecture. So, one is your sail structure, second one is fabric structure, cantonaries is uh, one of them, then you have rib structure, then arches, folded plate, frame structure and walls. This list can be further extended and we will also do that uh, and we discuss some other kind of structure like pneumatic structures uh, and other uh, form of uh, you know shape that uh, we use and structural uh, element we use in architecture. But before we again proceed further let us understand by the term what is shell. So, basically I can give you example of egg. So, what exactly it is the white uh, uh, outer shell is having enough strength and in some of the experiment is a, uh, it has been shown that it may take up to even more than uh, 20 to 22 kgs load. So, this is very thin very thin is so brittle and uh, you know who are uh, having eggs in uh, their uh, daily menu and all they know that when you break uh, it for the omelette or something. So, it is very thin, but it is able to carry certain load. So, this thin cell will make your space precious at the same time it can also take the load. So, what is the property basically? So, the it will resist the load external load and cell poet through its thickness and proper geometry that is very important. You know in order to achieve uh, the result we should also look into the geometry how the curvature to be drawn for the cell structure and all and uh, we will get some example to that. Fabric is basically something related to the cloth or membrane kind of material. So, sometimes in order to make structure very light uh, we use this kind of structure and you know uh, already I have given one example of uh, stadium Munich stadium there we have seen the huge structure though that example was taken 
for a lightweight type structure, but here we can take the same example where uh, like with some you know steel members and all the whole area is being shaded with some uh, translucent uh, you know fabric. And there is uh, so many application of this fabric where it is basically uh, act with a tension. So, the tension uh, tensioned fabric to be supported with some cables and yeah obviously, there will be some support which will uh, help to balance that and some compressive element structure uh, to be fixed where this membrane or the fabric are tied up. Then cantineries is basically a form uh, that we normally see that uh, it is basically a member which is you know drap means it is uh, simply you can say hang on uh, this two pole. So, if you uh, see the railway track over that all those you know electric uh, post and this uh, transmission uh, um, you know cable and other thing. So, we have some portal kind of structure. So, this is a cantonary structures. I can give you another example also we call it cantonary that is uh, in the queue uh, you know in uh, station or some of the meeting place um, in order to manage the queue we have certain post like this okay? and there is some elastic material which may be you know fixed at any direction. So, this is also called cantonary. So, we will see this application in our architecture. Then ripped is something uh, like the skeleton. Okay? So, if you remember we started with the uh, lecture where we have seen um, like take example from the nature like uh, the human body. Though we have some muscles, we have some outer finish and with some clothing and all we take it in a different manner. So, depending on the color and other thing, but basically uh, we are stable uh, or we are standing uh, because of some support of the bone, okay? the skeleton. And so, it is true for the some structure where it is very much predominant. Okay? So, every building they must have some you know structure or you know skeleton, but this kind of ripped structure is very predominant. We will look uh, into that also. Then arches are very simple. So, um, different kind of arches may form the architecture. Folded plate I explained with some uh, paper. right? So, if you have a paper and then if you just fold it, okay, so it may carry some load and when you uh, make it in order, so it can also take a huge load on it. And why it is taking load and all, how it will balance the compression and tension, uh, we will discuss in detail when we discuss about the folded plate structure separately in the class. So, uh, here we will uh, see uh, like some examples under this category. The frame structure is very simple state forward beam column composition structure. So, this is uh, something normally we see in any house or something and it has been practiced for so long. Uh, then the walls, sometimes you know uh, we have also shown some example where you have very you know opaque type of you know quality in your uh, structure where you have some uh, you know very less opening or no opening and walls are predominant to it. So, the walls some arrangement of walls will create some architecture. Uh, so, let us move to each of this category and take some examples and try to understand clear what exactly how this uh, synthesis is happening with architecture and structural form. This is one example and this is very simple one a small one uh, like the bus station, okay? a shelter you can see this, uh, this is maybe the office area uh, like official thing and all and people can wait there. This is the bus. So, here uh, you can see the thickness, okay? very thin and this is giving a form of uh, an arch. So, it is also known as surface structure because as of the thickness sales resist and transfer the load within the minimal thicknesses okay? and that is the advantage of using it. The similar sale structure being used in Sydney Opera House even in our uh, you know lotus temple in Delhi from India. 
Now for that what is required two or three dimensional curve geometry and correct orientation. So to give the support where to support it, where it should be oriented, how it will counter the weight, transfer the weight that is very important in this sail structure. And what is the advantage if you see this? So uh, this area is having no column. So you can create some kind of interesting space, column free space wherever we uh, require it. So this is one example, very beautiful example of sail structure. Uh, here we take another two. This is one auditorium in MIT and this is already uh, sometimes back we have uh, given this example of TWA terminal and uh, that time we have taken this example as a like form like a uh, flying bird or something. But here we are taking this uh, uh, structural element which is very thin made of concrete. Uh, so creating the sail structures. So they are being supported somewhere and it can create it. So basically the sail structure uh, if you just design it okay, with a proper geometry making uh, the balance take care of the uh, moment of uh, inertia. So, you can create beautiful space with this and the material uh, sometimes it may be made of concrete, sometimes you can also think of some other uh, material without compromising that uh, you know your strength um, then steepness and other thing and definitely the proper orientation and positioning of the support will give the stability to give you the synergy. So these four A's uh, I have explained here how to get it. Now come to the fabric structure. So again it is a, a cloth like material made of some you know uh, poly uh, ethylene based material sometimes high density polyethylene. So, different kind of material to be used in this and these are being very useful uh, to create your you know reduce the load of the roof where it is just uh, a requirement to you know cover up the area just to protect from the rain and the you know excessive uh, light uh, or heat then we can propose this kind of structure. So, we have seen one example from Munich that is the stadium and here it is a ice skating ring and this is basically a sports center in Germany where uh, it has been used. So, you can see uh, that how it is being placed. So, there are some supports okay, and where this membrane is fixed and from inside also there are some poles and there are some cables which will connect it. So, it is the tension fabric that resist the self weight and wind load because you know for the wind load there is a problem of upliftment of the structure. So, if you have a pitch roof, so there will be some you know wind. So, this will create some pressure here and that can make some upliftment of structures. We have to take care of this and now looking at the form. So, when we discuss this fabric or membrane structure in uh, you know detail uh, you know in detail. So, there we will see the different kind of um, you know membrane structure. So, here it is basically a conical one okay, and depending on that we will also discuss about uh, um, some you know property of the curve uh, whether it will take the arch form or parabolic or hyperbolic form. Um, so, we will discuss there. And here it is very beautifully designed, it will all take care of uh, the tension as well as the light. So, through this one may have the light and you can see this uh, the um, you know people are enjoying the skating there. So, this is one application of the fabric structure. So, let us move on to the next, uh, it is in um, again in Arizona State University campus. So, this is a structure, it is more clear. Uh, then the previous one where like different posts are being used and cables are used to provide the adequate tension to the fabric. So, it is creating a very interesting you know shade and shadow and also some space to enjoy. Though it is very open in nature, but this is creating uh, a beautiful um, piece of architecture. If you see from there, so these are all uh, you know tensioned fabric 
okay and supported by some you know very uh, you know lesser thickness cable though they are having the strength to carry uh, this thing and you have some support long pole to tie up to create that tension in adequate manner. So, there also we uh, I can mention something about the cable suspended bridges. So, there are many examples in the world. So, that also act with certain principle, but here it is called fabric structure because of this fabric being used in this. So, it is again uh, having the tension uh, tensile structure in nature. Uh, there are some members which will take care of the compression, but overall it is under the fabric structure. Now, move to the cantilever is already we have discussed that there will be some two poles and a member is just resting on that uh, and it is giving a form of a portal. So, here uh, this is the example of Dallas airport Washington DC. So, here you can see uh, like this is a terminal building as, as because you a terminal building should have some you know openness and you should not really obstruct it with uh, regular number of columns and all. So, here you can see that uh, this is basically a series of such component being placed one after another uh, and then uh, there are some you know slabs the cantineries which will rest on this to support. Okay. So, inclined pyre support the cantilever slab. So, this kind of structure is uh, being seen in many cases. So, here are the synthesis happened with the cantilever with this. So, overall this is giving a sense of a portal, but as well as uh, it will also create this particular space column free. So, whenever we require this column free uh, kind of structure, we may think of that. So, what exactly happened there? Transfer load to the support through tension, okay. roof self weight uh, should exit uh, the wind load. Because of uh, this kind of long span, there will be if this is free, so there will be a uh, flow of wind and other things. So, this should have the self weight adequately, so that it will resist again the wind load. Now, reinforced concrete is sometimes chosen as the material because of uh, the property and uh, again you mention uh, just look into this, this is RCC as because uh, this will uh, act with the tension. So, compression can well taken off by plain concrete, but in order to take care of the tension, we need some reinforcement as RCC does. Uh, and um, compared to the other example, the Dallas airport, this is again huge. So, if you see this particular uh, you know material having the thickness is very small and here what is happening, this is example of uh, uh, you know uh, pavilion of Portugal. So, here uh, these two buildings okay, and their portico being connected with this uh, canopy. So, here canopy draps between two porticos and it is uh, again open. So, there will be uh, you know wind blow and other thing and next to it there is some water body also. So, it is predominant. So, it should have uh, the property to resist again that. So, it is allowed uh, being to this. So, sometimes uh, this kind of structure is uh, being created to give uh, something like uh, some openness. Uh, to that you know span and considering the scale and you can consider this human being height. So, take a uh, standard height of 5 feet 4 inches. So, you can see the span is a huge span. So, it is possible. It is stable, it is standing there and this huge span is being supported on and on this portico. So, this is uh, again another example of cantineries. Now, from cantineries we move to reef structure, already uh, the way I define that it is basically uh, very visible um, that uh, skeleton. So, here you can see look into the building. So, most predominant even uh, this is uh, the glass being used in this, but here if you see that there are some ring kind of structure and being supported with some reefs. So, basically uh, if you see uh, uh, 
uh, this thing and we compared it with uh, our globe. So, the latitude, longitude, this is making a, basically a skeleton to it and it is very well designed and here it is not in a circular form. The inside structure is basically creating a ramp which will go up. So, this is another uh, example where uh, the structure is basically made of steel and it is visible. So, predominant structure as we define the structural form sometimes is basically the predominant structural element to the building. Here it is very clear uh, from the picture that it is the combination of ribs and uh, like your um, circular the horizontal and vertical ribs to create this rib structure. So, where it is uh, being useful? Like it depends on the concept how you want to show. Sometimes you may hide your structure within the building, you can only see the overall outcome or the form of the building or if you require um, uh, to show the structural element, make it very open type, so you can do it. So, even uh, if you recall the example of a Bangkok airport, they are also something like that. So, they have multiple series of you know uh, this kind of arch form and they connect it. So, that uh, while sitting here you can see outside. So, from outside it can form this. So, the same example can be categorized as the open type of uh, architecture uh, in visually openness is there, but in terms of the structural thing it is basically the ribbed structure. Now, what exactly it is here, there are a few points that generate and, uh, and define architectural form, although their skeleton character often necessitate a separate involving system. So, what exactly it is, uh, like to make it, so it may have a separate system uh, to you know hold it, to make it stable, so which sometimes may uh, be very pleasant, uh, but sometimes uh, you just do not want it, just some portion of that is of that kind. So, you want to show it or not, it depends on the architect, but in order to give the completeness, in order to uh, you know get that particular clarity. So, it is uh, sometimes create its own structural envelope. Rip structure generally enclose single volume rather than multi story construction. So, whenever you have multi story building, so, sometimes we just compromise it. So, we will uh, simply go for a you know small kind of structure not the high rise with the skeleton, uh, but yeah definitely in some of the high rise building we have used that with the ribbed uh, structural form and we put it in grid, grid structure and all we will discuss that uh, in uh, the upcoming lectures. Take another example, this is National Art Center in uh, Tokyo, Japan and here you, it is another example where you see that you have some vertical uh, member structures and you have some wavy uh, structure connecting. So, from inside also if you see the openness is maintained, but it is giving a uh, ribbed uh, like a skeleton kind of uh, you know um, appearance from outside. So, it is very predominant to the building. So, I have taken this example under this category. So, vertical uh, but curved ribs support and define the undulating facet. So, here it is creating some undulating effect through the structural arrangement. Now, come to arches. Uh, this is another uh, beautiful uh, example of a museum, Paul Klee Museum in Switzerland, where beautiful use of arches and different size and all, it is as in, uh, resembles with the mountain at the back. So, to bring that uh, you know uh, compatibility with the environment arch being used. So, basically uh, take uh, this arch form can take various shape, it may be semicircular, it may be parabolic or pointed. So, in Islamic architecture we have seen some pointed arches and sometimes in later the Felix Candela's design. Um, that we have uh, seen this kind of you know structure where it is uh, basically your uh, parabolic or hyperbolic paraboloid structures and semicircular is very common in many of the you know 
domes uh, we seen in uh, India history. So, there we use the semicircular thing even in uh, um, you know Gol Gambuj uh, in South India. So, there also we have seen that domical structure and usually meet the ground at an inclination to the horizontal. So, here it is uh, meeting the ground, but sometimes when it is a combination that you have a rectil, uh, you know rectilinear uh, form and then on top of this, this uh, arches or something uh, in a domical form the section being used. So, here basically what we are talking about the example I have given for a gold gambus that is not exactly the arch that is the dome. So, here we are more emphasizing on the arch form. Okay. So, uh, depending on that how you create the arch as a door or entrance. So, that is being more uh, predominant in this part. So, let us take another example. This is in uh, uh, walls. So, uh, great glass house. So, here if you see that it is basically a multiple arch in both the direction creating this kind of you know structure and most interestingly to support this. So, we they have a ring uh, beam okay, all along. So, if you see this has been hidden by the glass, but here you can see that here it is a ring and then on top of that you have this thing and in order to support it in order to have the moods transfer of the load on top they have some inclined you know vertical support a column which is basically the normal. So, they are making almost 90 degree to this support. So, it is transferring the load in that sense. So, this is another example of arches. So, mainly predominant is arch, but definitely uh, this being supported with some other format. So, as we have uh, discussed at the beginning that in building there may be some multiple kind of structural systems, but uh, looking at the dominance uh, we will say uh, or we will take that in some category. Now, come to the folded plate. Uh, if you recall that in uh, some of my lecture I have explained with a plain piece of paper and, and then I folded and create some origami. So, it is something like that. So, this is US Air Force Academy uh, Chapel. So, here uh, you see that it is being created with some folded plate uh, giving the adequate strength and also the column free spaces. So, uh, in order to make this convention hall, assembly hall, some you know space for huge gathering, we require the space to be column free so that we can use it. So, here this is the interior of this you can see easily that it is something like you know with a fold like uh, the origami we create different kind of uh, you know form uh, some animals birds or some other form and this is the pretty similar. The use of this structure is basically for the roof or sometimes in the wall and sometimes with some inclined truss we can create the same. So, this is one example of the folded plate which is basically a structural form but that also create the architecture of this kind. So, it is making synthesis with architectural and structural form. This is another example of tempo drum. It is in Germany. This is basically a multi-purpose uh, you know auditorium, different activities going on, different functions and again uh, in order to have clear view and other thing it is it was uh, mandatory to make uh, this space column free and for that the options one of the options was to create it with the folded plate. So, it is giving the strength. So, the reach and valley that will have different compression and tension we will talk into that also in detail. So, this is something uh, we can see that instead of a plane uh, surface or you know domical surface that we have seen in uh, many of the historical buildings here it is something which being created with the folded plate that being supported those valleys are supported at the uh, end and it is uh, taking the load it is transfers the transfer the load to the members and solve our purpose to create the space as the way we wanted to create and depending on the space depending on 
um, the requirement, the volume, definitely design will change. So, this can be also used for the warehouse, there uh, we can have this kind of structure okay? and we support some of the area. So, wherever we have this you know valley. So, reach is this top portion and valley is the down portion okay? for any mountain and this is pretty similar to that. Concrete can be used to it and some of the you know small gallery and all being uh, made with wood. So, when we discuss uh, about the structural materials, we will again look back into this to create different kind of form, what kind of material is suitable. So, we are coming uh, towards the end of this lecture. So, uh, here uh, we um, talk about the frame structure. So, again it is a combination of the beam and column. This is one example, uh, the La Grande Arche in Paris. Uh, this is uh, also called frame uh, within frame. This is very good building, we all appreciate it, but basically the fundamental thing is uh, it is being made with uh, the some orthogonal uh, skeleton structure being beam column combination and uh, it is sometime also uh, very you know easy to make, but nowadays we should not say like easy or very tough to create, everything is possible. Uh, with proper execution, proper selection of the material, uh, technique and available technology. But here this form is being created with a frame uh, where like you have a series of you know column and then it being supported with the beam, then top of that again it will go on. So, it is making a skeleton. So, normal housing also uh, we see those buildings are of this frame structure, but it has some limitation. Uh, in terms of the height. So, when we uh, discuss about the evolution of high rise building, there we will see that when height goes up, so along with the gravity load, gravity load is the self weight uh, acting towards uh, the ground, the center of the earth and there is another called lateral load like wind and other thing. Uh, so, the gravity load and other thing is can be taken well care of this. But when you go vertical as we have seen in the load that with the increase of height wind load, wind pressure will also uh, increase. So, there we have to support it with some other advanced techniques. So, we move from frame structure to the tube structure, we can also add some structural bracing to give extra support. So, anyway uh, we will not discuss it now for the, like in more detail, we will come to that how to get that thing uh, to get the desired height of the structure. So, move to the next example, this is example from India Mumbai, this is a hotel building, again is very simple, uh, so made with some column and you can see the visible uh, thing is uh, also showing uh, visually the grid form. So, this is also a example of an example of frame st structure. Now, uh, this is in the last category that is wall. Uh, where the wall or structural walls are uh, capable of you know participating in the integration of architectural and structural form. So, basically if you see that it is a series of walls uh, mainly, okay? so that is very predominant here. Though some part of that we have some uh, you know stilted column and all, but overall it is uh, giving uh, you that particular sense. And uh, look into that, if you see this kind of this side elevation, there is hardly uh, any opening to that. There is a slick opening here, here and sometimes uh, in this portion also, but it is not the case that all the time we will have this opaqueness. Sometimes also we can achieve some degree of transparency uh, with this wall. So, proper combination of that, there are examples of Louis Icahn buildings and all. Um, we will also discuss uh, during that you know detailed discussion on the wall and all. So, move to the next example, this is St. Anger Residency in France. Here if you see this is something like looking at the building, uh, it is basically the wall, okay? the wall uh, all the side, but as I mentioned that you can also create some transparency by creating or providing some of uh, you know. Uh, some transparent 
uh, element to it because this is uh, the opaque. So, opaque transparency you all know uh, like opaque is something that you cannot see through transparent where you can see through. So, um, here you can see that uh, this glass use of glass can give you a visual connection from uh, for the people who are uh, you know staying inside to the outside world, but here it is predominantly the structural form is the wall which is creating this architecture. So, in this uh, we are uh, now to summarize and here uh, like let us just the way we have discussed in this presentation we know that what is the form your form is shape so 3D okay and then further we discuss architectural form so not only this is basically outline of the building okay but plus some other architectural aspect okay now next to that what we have uh, also learned that structural form so here what we said that which is the predominant structural system of the building we call that or consider that as structural form so uh, from that we just uh, come to a conclusion that it should be a structural system rather than a structural form. And then after that we also discussed about four S's of structure which is very important. Uh, number one is uh, not in particular order. So, one is your uh, you know strength, then you have uh, your steepness then you have stability and then the synergy these four components are essential to create it. And next to that uh, the synergy uh, the synthesis between architectural and structural form depending on the predominant uh, structural system that uh, is installed to the building. So, based on that we have eight categories. So, under eight categories what are those? So, uh, like if you can recall the first we started with uh, uh, the structure um, just uh, you know not in order. So, let us start with uh, the fabric structure, then uh, you have sail structure that was the first one, then you have also discussed the cantonary, okay. then framed, then we have called ribbed. Uh, which is skeleton type, then you have arches and then you have folded plate okay. and then last but not the least we also call uh, discuss with the walls. So, with all this we create a particular predominant structural form which is visible in our architectural buildings. Uh, we have seen many examples and there are more many more. So, I advise you all like uh, I have only given you few examples. So, depending on that you also try to uh, you know explore more examples and um, you know in some forum we will also discuss it uh, like how to define it which uh, is the predominant of that building. So, I love to uh, see those uh, you know questions and those you know discussion I am looking forward to that, but you know all these things uh, like sometimes it is predominant. But at the beginning of the lecture we start that a building may consist of multiple structural systems right. So, they may create sometimes something different like not coming into the category it will just create some contrast ok. Out of that we may have a building like this uh, where it is very tough to define or put it in the category somewhere it is in a combination of the frame or sometimes it may be the sail structure some part of that folded structure. So, it create beauty overall we appreciate it not a particular dominant structure, but overall composition creating a contrast creating something very beautiful. So, definitely we are really interested to look into that and with that um, the upcoming two lectures uh, the basically the single topic that will uh, you know discuss that is connecting structure and architecture. So, here uh, we will see different kind of uh, where sometimes structure is predominant or sometimes 
your architecture is predominant, sometimes it followed, sometimes it is some unorthodox uh, or something you know not orthogonal. So, we will see that. So, that is uh, that will be our lecture number 6 and 7 connecting structure and architecture uh, and these are the reference. So, you can I have added one more example that is a book written by D. K. Ching, architecture, form, space and order. You can go through it and I have also given the references for all the image sources, you can go and get more detail. And again I would like to thank you all to take part in this course and till the next lecture, uh, bye bye, thank you.